Thank you for joining us for part three of Notable Works 2021 Earth Day Celebration. These woods are fine, these trees, these plants, chipmunks, crows, sun, sky, rain, moon, they're fine. The woodland is full of fallen acorns and I am tripping on a floor of marbles. These woods don't need anything, no clearing, cutting cleaning, raking, nothing, they're fine. Hi, I'm Dave Dragoni, and I will be reading my poem called Resilience from Voices of the Earth, the Future of Our Planet 2, uh, put together by Notable Works Publishing. Uh, now, resilience is a topic that's been written about by countless uh, writers and, and poets uh, through the years. And I really think, like most people, that resilience doesn't just happen. It has to be developed through trials and trials and sometimes errors. Um, so I'd like to read my poem called Resilience. Resilience seeds itself deep in the mind. Resilience holds fast, moving towards providence, anchored to every kind court of humanity that names its unflagging name in battering winds, tosses the unrescued ship of hope into believing in deliverance. Resilience lives behind ribs, guarding its bruises on broken, homeless streets or wherever it lives. Resilience honors itself through its decision to go on, prying through broken fields and stunted plantings, tough as a beautiful weed. Resilience struggles to welcome rain while it attends its unpromised flower. But listen, the sea sometimes has to speak with stones in its mouth, trying to find a heartening voice. And so resilience comes to shore, turning things over and over again, scouring itself with undercurrents of doubt. But our sea will go on, braving whatever coast it meets, and kindness will remain resilient as it somehow goes on thumping. We walk on these treasured lands, preserved and shared by someone who saw this lanky oak and berries bright as sacred gifts for all to behold. Here on this path of hidden wonders, we can toss out the day's burdens and cleanse our lungs with long-awaited, crisp, fresh breath soaking in the soft, soothing sunlight, sometimes difficult to see when standing amidst rows and rows of towering hickories. Each tree, whether pine, oak, or walnut, speaks of a story through trunk, bark, or bough of triumph and resilience, standing tall and oh so eloquently through years of tempest might, or fiery plight, or even the not-so-gentle touch of a woodpecker's delight. We gratefully walk on this land where acorns, berries, and pine cones abound, adorning the ground 
like a blanket wrapped delicately around a newborn for the first time. A feast for our eyes and a bountiful banquet for the creatures who seek shelter here, build their nests, and securely nestle themselves within the burly branches and shrubs. We walk on these lands, mere tenants in these timeless groves, where tender fawn peeks out through patches of wildflowers in early bloom, and where the scent of pine makes itself known, and where the finches pause to share their glee harmoniously as they bask in the gentle mist of early morn. We walk these lands, legacies unselfishly bestowed, with forethought and generosity, emanating pride and hope through conserving, protecting, and nurturing these bountiful acres, surely helping to sow the seeds of tomorrow. The Whirly Birds. When I was just a girl and free from stress, I used to play. Out in the yard, I'd run around and dream the day away. And sometimes in the springtime, when the seeds of trees would fall, I'd gather them together in a pile and have a ball. I'd look inside inspecting them and stick them on my nose. I'd wonder who created them in thoughtful, deep repose. I'd lay and watch the wind as it would gently coax them free from bonds that kept them closely bound to branches on the tree. Come follow me, the wind would call. Come fly and spin with me. I'll take you for a ride and show you magic sights to see. Some feared the wind and holding fast, refused to just let go. They clung in fear to mother's branch, the world they'd come to know. But others who relinquished bonds would float upon the air. They'd spread their wings and twist and dance and sing without a care. Exhilaration wonder at a world they saw below. Excitement filled them as they gasped at life's great magic show. A lucky few would meet the earth to ripen in the sun. They'd shed their coats and growing roots a new life had begun. We all must search for courage to become what we can be, to suffer as we grow and learn with all we come to see in search of bright tomorrows, dreaming dreams to pacify the fear we all must challenge as we spread our wings to fly. And reaching towards the sun we'll soar because we know it's true that anything is possible if you believe in you. Hi, my name is Alicia Lehrer, and I'm the Executive Director of the Winnesquatucket River Watershed Council. Thanks to Notable Works for 
making sure everybody knows that we can all make a difference in making our world a better place. And thank you so much for highlighting the work of the Winnesquatucket River Watershed Council and our beautiful Winnesquatucket River and its whole watershed. I'm just here today to give you a couple of updates for 2021 on what's happening in the Winnesquatucket. First off, we are just completing a new strategic plan, and as part of that, we are creating a new mission statement, which is to create positive environmental, social, and economic change by revitalizing the Winnesquatucket River, its greenway, and its communities. I'm so happy to report that after many years of study, the Centerdale Manor Superfund site restoration is finally underway. If you are unfamiliar with this site, unfortunately in the 70s there was a chemical spill on what was a site or a chemical barrel washing operation that is now Centerdale Manor and Brook Village and it released a lot of dioxin and other pollution into the Winnesquatucket River. After many years, this is now clean, being cleaned up. The source area here at Centerdale Manor is now completely clean. There's some beautiful walking trails right through the, this area. And the next area to be cleaned up will be Allendale Mill Pond an area we call the Oxbow, which is a wetland area, and Lyman Mill Pond. And just for a frame of reference, Route 44 in North Providence is right up this way, and down here, Lyman Avenue in Johnston and the Wunasquatucket Greenway end is right on this side. As a partner, for EPA and the folks that are cleaning up this Superfund site, the Winnesquatucket River Watershed Council has some input and recommendations because we are representing the community. And one of the things that we are highly recommending is that as a restoration piece to give back from what was destroyed we're recommending that we continue the Winnesquatucket Greenway from where it ends here on Lyman Avenue all the way through the Superfund site. And we want to make sure that North Providence and Johnston have equal access to this new section of Greenway if we can get it built. So we're also recommending that this road that goes right by Allendale, Allendale Mill Pond called Allendale Ave, um, on Allendale Avenue gets restored as a connector for pedestrians and bicycles between North Providence and Johnston. We're also working on building climate resilience. This is a big initiative for us. If you all remember in the 2010, there was some pretty extreme flooding on the Winnesquatucket River. And this is what the Onlyville neighborhood of Providence looked like at that time. We're working with a group from the Natural Resources Conservation Service to do a flood resilience study throughout the entire watershed starting in North Smithfield, Gloucester, and including Smithfield, Johnston, North Providence, and Providence to determine what we can do to make sure that that type of flooding doesn't happen again. But we're also making sure that we're engaging the neighborhood that mostly receives the floodwaters, and this is the Onlyville neighborhood in Providence. We've just started a cohort of 20 residents that we're building capacity with to um, build their leadership skills and their understanding of the issues so that they are fully prepared to weigh in on what happens in their community. It's a really exciting group and uh, everyone in the group um, gives their thoughts on what their priorities are in the neighborhood and they're very generous with their time. We conduct all sessions of this group in both English and Spanish because there's a lot of Spanish speakers in our group. Also for building resilience, we have been installing what we call green infrastructure, which is a fancy way of saying 
using plants and soils to capture and treat stormwater to both prevent it from running off directly into the Winasquatucket River, but to also clean it. It also has wonderful co-benefits of making our areas a lot more beautiful, a lot more livable, building habitat for pollinators, and it puts to work a local workforce. In this picture, you see our own river ranger team. These are the guys that maintain the Winasquatucket Greenway, guys and gals, I should say. And they're doing all the landscaping installation for our green infrastructure projects. They also install signage at each one of the projects to explain to the community how they work and why they're important. In neighborhoods like Olneyville, where there's a lot of Spanish speakers, we make sure that the signage is in both English and Spanish. Another exciting happening is there is a new section of Greenway being designed on the Gotham Greens property, which is on the corner of Harris Avenue and Atwells Avenue in Providence. This Greenway will go right next to the Winasquatucket River. But the really exciting thing is that in conjunction with the work being done on the 610 connector, we're going to join the Winasquatucket Greenway and the Washington Secondary Bike Path on this site. So this will help all of us connect more green spaces throughout the state. And speaking of greenways, we're just redesigning the downtown section of the Winasquatucket Greenway from Eagle Square, which is up on this end, all the way to Providence Place Mall. And we'll be changing the entire neighborhood so that people have a lot more access to the river. They have more parks. They have more canoe and kayak launches. But they also will have separation between bikes and pedestrians and cars. So we're going to be narrowing some of the streets, like this one. This is Kinsley Avenue, which will be narrowed to one lane. And adding in that green infrastructure I was talking about, partly as a barrier between the cars and the greenway. The greenway will go on both, uh, both directions on one side of the street and then cross over to the other side of the street. Or I should say the river. And we'll be adding in a lot more signage and art spaces and places for people to gather. So keep your eye on this downtown section of Greenway over the next couple of years. Our final design should be completed this year, 2021, and we expect to start construction maybe toward the middle or end of next year. And by 2024, this whole area is going to look completely different and make a really strong connection to downtown Providence and Water Place Park. Those are my highlights for today. I just want to thank Notable Works again for being a champion for all of us to work together to make our world a better place to live. If you want to join us, and I hope you do, visit www.wrwc.org and join our mailing list and hear about all the upcoming exciting things that are happening. Join us for a paddle or a hike. Join us for a cleanup event. We welcome all of you. Thanks.
Thank you, Aubrey, David, Janet, and Alicia. And thank you to all the contributing poets and special guests for this year's Notable Works Earth Day celebration. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that this presentation has inspired you in some way, and thank you for supporting the arts. Please visit Notable Works at www.notableworks.org. We're also on Facebook at notableworks.org, and also on Twitter, Notable Works in Rhode Island. Thank you very much.